Hi Scorpio, welcome back to my channel. Happy birthday to you guys. Happy birthday, happy solar return, happy new year to all of you Scorpios. I hope that you're having a beautiful Scorpio season. Um, this will be a reading for the month of November when it comes to your love. Let's look to see what the general energy surrounding you for love. Um, as always, remember these are general messages. So take what resonates and you leave the rest, all right? Um, if you're interested in connecting with me for a personal reading, details are in the, dis in the description box below. Follow me on Instagram, the Moon Goddess Tarot. And um, I think that is about it for housekeeping. So let's jump into your reading. I've already said my prayers. I've already asked that all of your messages be for the highest good of all involved with harm to none. Okay, Ashe. Spirit guys, what's the energy surrounding Scorpio for the month of November? I keep saying October. The month of November, Spirit guys. November 2019, where the energy surrounding Scorpio for love. I have one card. One oracle. We'll start with the oracle and then jump into the tarot. Okay, so spirit guys, what's the messages you want me to share with Scorpio for the month of November when it comes to love? Okay. So your card, Scorpio, is chaos and conflict. All right, card 33. So know that within everything that's happening, because during your season, there's Mercury retrograde in your sign. Um... And we've just come through so many different transits and, and changes and healing. There's so much healing in 2019, right? And right now there's chaos and conflict within your love situation. Now know that chaos energy is creative energy. From chaos comes creativity, comes creation, all right? Within this chaos and conflict, know that everything is being shifted and worked and moved and, and, and for your highest good. All right, all of this is happening for your highest good. So you need to change your perspective. If you're feeling exhausted with everything that's happening, know that this is all going to take you to your highest and it will all make sense. I know everything might seem crazy at the, at the minute, but take those deep breaths and know that it will all make sense. At the bottom is happy, happy. So there's that underlying all of this. It, it's taking you to your happiness, your truth, your authenticity. Why is at the top of the deck? So spirit is asking you to really question a lot of things when it comes to your relationships. Like, why are you in this relationship? Why do you feel this way? Why, whatever your whys are, make a list and go through them. You know, put things on paper. If everything seems really overwhelming when it comes to love in November or, and this might even be love for yourself, not necessarily another person. Ask yourself why? Why do I feel this way? Why why do I do these things? Why do I say why do I react certain ways? Why do certain things trigger me? You know? Down the middle is thinker. Wow. Well, there you go. It's interesting. This is 44. The, t the card on the table is 33. All right, you have 26 and 31. All right. So um thinker, that's you in your thoughts, analyzing questioning and what's so beautiful is that on either side of that thinker card is your card regeneration this would be associated with the death card in the tarot deck and on the other side there's a change in the wind all right so look at that a change in the wind on one side regeneration on the other and thinker down the middle so and that's scorpio retrograde in action Okay, so do whatever thinking you need to do, whatever processing you need to do, but allow it without fighting it, without thinking that it's things are going wrong or something's bad or whatever the case may be. Go with the flow. All right. Everything will make sense. You have to, like I always like to say, you've got to break some eggs in order to make an omelette. That's just the way it is. All right. So let's look into the tarot and see what the messages come up for you for this month. Like, which deck do I want to use? I think I'll use this one. Actually, no. I'll start with an overall message for your situation and then look at your energy and their energy and see what comes up. So, Spirit, guys, what's the messages you want me to share with Scorpio? Scorpio. 
when it comes to love in the month of November. What's the general energy surrounding Scorpio when it comes to love in the month of November? Spirit guys, what's the energy surrounding Scorpio when it comes to love in the month of November? What the message? Ooh, okay, Queen of Pentacles and then Eight of Wands reversed. All right, so again, here's the slowdown with this Eight of Wands. Slow down, everything slow down. Um, the Eight of Pentacles is here at the bottom. The Seven of Swords, ooh, at the top of the deck. Let's see down the middle, the Five of Cups. All right. So Scorpio, this Queen of Pentacles energy, the Queen of Pentacles is that committed energy. This might be you, this might be your person. All right. Um, this person might be a an earth sign. So Taurus, Virgo, or Capricorn. Like I said, this could be your energy that I'm reading, the Queen of Pentacles. A sense of being very much... Um, male or female this could be this is committed energy this is like somebody who is dedicated who is supportive of them of their family their loved ones they take care of everything they're the homemakers the career people they take care like i said they take care of everybody um they're really good when it comes to money drawing in the money attracting money um taking care of business really and truly all right, and then there's the Eight of Wands energy, so a sense of a slowdown. Um, there's a sense of a frustration here. Something's just, there's no fire, there's no motivation. At the bottom of the deck is the Eight of Pentacles, so perhaps you, Scorpio, are focusing a lot on your work or focusing on building something for yourself. There's a sense of um, paying attention to the finite details, the very... Um, honing skills as well all right um maybe just head down and focus on work maybe that's how you're dealing with the chaos and conflict by just devoting your time to what you can control you know your work um study um dedication so there's the seven of swords energy and this five of cups Right, and it's actually this way, and the Seven of Swords is looking back at, sorry, it's actually this way on my table. The Seven of Swords is looking back at the Five of Cups. This is how it looks to me, right? And the Eight of Pentacles is here. So, maybe this is how you feel, this Five of Cups energy, with when it comes to chaos and conflict. Um... When it comes to within your love, this sense of chaos and conflict, you might be focusing on the wrong things. The Seven of Swords, I feel is like the Seven of Swords is there's a sense of avoidance here rather than sitting with what actually feels. So again, maybe you are like focused so much on your work in order to make sense of everything, in order to direct your energies because otherwise your mind would probably like kind of explode with all this heavy emotion that you might be experiencing at the minute. Why is the Seven of Swords here? The Ten of Cups reversed. So, I feel like running away from a connection because the Ten of Cups is, this is marriage, this is family, this is love, extreme happiness, etc. Right? Right now, it's like I feel Scorpio is focused on themselves, which is a good thing, I feel, because that's what Mercury Retrograde will make you do. Focus on yourself and look beyond, because here's the High Priestess, looking beyond what you're seeing with your two eyes. So in order to make sense of everything, it's like you have to pull away from everybody else. Um, Where's the Five of Cups here? The Scorpio Spirit, guys. The Ten of Wands. So yeah, there's a lot of burden here, a lot of heaviness. And this month, you are going to, like Spirit says, chaos and conflict. There's a sense of, of really looking within. Got to let go of that weight. 
Gotta let go of that weight. Can I? What's the? Why is the Eight of Pentacles here, Spirit Guides? What's the Eight of Pentacles here for Scorpio? Okay, so you have the Six of Pentacles and the Knight of Swords. So whatever it, when it comes to love, whatever you have been. Okay, maybe this Eight of Pentacles is you working on the relationship. Not necessarily your love. For some of you, you are pulling back and work and focusing on your business or focusing on your skills or maybe your studies. For some of you, you might be studying, trying to get a promotion within work, etc. Um, some of you, this is you working on the relationship or trying to figure out how to work on the relationship. There's a sense of a give or take here. All right, so there's a massive change that's going to sweep in as well in this month, I feel, when it comes to love. Um... I feel like some of you are actually going to be moving away in order to be able to give more to your love relationships or to work on your love relationships. Maybe that's what this is, a sense of being uprooted. Chaos and conflict, yeah. There's a sense of y'all being uprooted in order to work on your relationship. So maybe some of you are actually looking to move to be with your other person or your person is moving to be with you. For some of you, you're putting balance between your work and your love. Like for some of you, you've been like just working, working, working. And it's put a, a, a drain, it's drained the energies within your love relationship. And that's changing. There's a sense of you putting balance between your work and your love now. And it's, it's, it's moving quickly. This energy is moving quickly. So like I said, for some of you, y'all might be actually looking to uproot and move city, country, wherever, state, wherever. To, to fix, to work on your love relationship. There's no more running away from this when it comes to the connection. I feel it's something that you're like hung up on here. You are like mulling over. Why is the Eight of Wands reversed here, Spirit Guys, the Scorpio? Well, wow. whatever slowdown is going to eventually move forward with the chariot here. There's a real sense of slow down. These are two very opposite energies, the Eight of Wands reverse and the Chariot, all right? So maybe in order to determine which direction to go in, that's where the slow down had to happen. Mercury retrograde kicked in, right? But it's directing you in the direction you want to go in. And it's interesting here, you have movement again. The Knight of Swords, this is movement. The Eight of Wands, movement. Um... Whatever changes, I feel as if it'll be a real slow down. It's almost as if nothing will make sense. Um, and then you'll come to some decision or your other person will come to some decision and all of a sudden things will move really quickly. It could also be the cosmos just doing its own thing, right? Where eventually when, Merc when Mercury goes direct, the 20th of November, remember there's still about two weeks shadow before things flow as smoothly as you'd want them, before things start to move forward as smoothly as you'd want, you'd want them. But there'll be movement nonetheless. Why is the, um, here is movement again, the Eight of Cups. So a sense of moving, walking away, um, change. Why is the Queen of Pentacles here, for you guys? Why is the Queen of Pentacles here? <clears throat> the Six of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune. Wow, okay. So for some of you, there are children involved here with the Six of Cups. Um, this Queen of Pentacles, the Six of Cups, and the, the Wheel of Fortune. For some of you, this is like a soulmate connection. Um, and it's like you're coming back to it. So for some of you, I feel like there's some sort of reconciliation happening here. Where, like I said, you or your person has... Like it's like everything outside of the relationship took precedent, whether it was work, um, hobbies, friends, whatever the case may be. And then all of a sudden, no, they're starting to realize, hang on, I need to prioritize this relationship. And there's a balance coming in and it's coming quickly. Like some person is looking to come towards you really quickly, whether move in with you, um, move city, state to be with you, to visit you or you visiting them. Remember, it's general, so it can go either way. Um, because they realize that this is a real soulmate connection, all right? And it's like the time is now. The wheel of fortune is like the wheel is spinning in your favor. So it's like almost like a destiny. It's like when you follow 
your alignment, when you stay within your alignment, when you follow your truth, everything just falls into place by itself. And when I see the Six of Cups doing the Wheel of Fortune, I think this could be like, remember I did past life relationship readings. So when I see the Six of Cups and the Wheel of Fortune, it's like, y'all come back to this. It's like the wheel has turned again in y'all's favor to be together again, you know? So like I said, this could be, for some of you, this could be a reconciliation. Um, this could be somebody from your childhood, somebody you've known for ages who's now appeared again. Um, this could be somebody who, like I said, this could connect to children. So maybe you and your partner have children together or are expecting a child. We'll find out that you're expecting a child. There's so many different messages coming through again because it's general. So I'm just trying to like cover all the bases that I'm hearing. Um, but the Queen of Pentacles, like I said, like traditionally, this is a mother, this is a wife, a girlfriend, whatever, but, uh, it could be male energy as well, but this is a committed relationship energy, right? This isn't just random. This is a committed relationship energy. And then when I see the Six of Cups, so that's soulmate, the Wheel of Fortune, the wheel is turning in your favor. Um, there's a sense of luck here. It's almost as if things just fall into place perfectly and remember like i said with the eight of wands reverse and the chariot showing up it's like one energy is like nothing moving and then the next energy is like movement so it's almost as if overnight things just switch <clears throat> all right what's the word of advice for scorpio in the month of november when it comes to love spirit guides wow i love it i love it i love it so your first card out is the moon and your second card is death. So that's you, Scorpio. Um, here are the moon energy. Your word of advice is like, for me, when I see the moon, it's, there is a sense of something hidden. No, you have the seven of swords here. But for me, I feel like the seven of swords was a sense of avoidance. It's like focusing on yourself. Like remember in the beginning, I said some of you are focusing on your work in order to not stress about something that's fallen away within your relationship or changing within your relationship i feel like the seven of swords here isn't necessarily somebody trying to get away with something or somebody trying to trick you i feel like it was a sense of avoidance whether it's you or your person or both people avoiding dealing with the relationship issue so it was like this is too much for me right now let me just focus on work because there's a sense of worry and stress here with the five of cups and the ten of so ten of wands. It's like lots of weight, burden, stress, strain. So your word of advice, um, Scorpio, is the moon energies. Is, this is Pisces. Come out of the illusion of your mind. Come out of these. You could be creating scenarios that don't exist. All right. You could be. And remember, our thoughts create our reality. Our thoughts and emotions coming together and our actions create our reality. So it's like, what's being reflected to you within this situation? Right? Like what's the lesson? Rather than think, oh my God, chaos and conflict. I can't deal with it. Let me just like avoid. Let me run away. Like, what is the lesson? What is being shown here to you? Right? Also know that within November... Your relationships might be going through many different phases. You might be going through many different phases. You might be one minute, you might feel quite optimistic about the relationship. And the next minute you might be like, nah, I ain't about this no more. And it might be back and forth and up and down. But remember, like, I feel like Mercury retrograde is not the time to make any decisions. Sit with the energies. At the same time, you know, we cannot allow a transit to stop us from living like there's some things that have to be decided no you can't wait till the 20th of november to decide about certain things so you get on with it but if there's something that you don't have to say now or decide now allow the slowdown to assist you in making any decisions as you move forward your next card is death so you are facing looking at what spirit what the message is within this what's the hidden what's what is it what is what things really are not the illusion what it really is and then allowing what no longer serves you to fall away to allow a new energy to flow in 
right? From death comes life. From death comes life. From death comes life. And it keeps going on and on like that, right? It's a phase. It's a cycle. And that's what you are experiencing now. As well as for the death card to show up during your solar return. Um, it's like embody all of you. Embody all of Scorpio. I'm going to clarify this moon card. Oh my word. Like I said, embody all of Scorpio, the magician at the bottom of the deck. So you hold the power to all of this within this chaos. Remember I said chaos energy is creative energy. So how are you going to adjust and flow with everything that's happening around you in order to elevate you and to free you and to heal you and to transform your relationships? By transforming yourself. The Ace of Pentacles. Where is the gift? Page of Cups. Where is the gift? Okay, hang on. What's the moon here? Spirit guides. The Scorpio in the month of November. The Hierophant. So that's Taurus. The Ace of Pentacles is not at the bottom. All right, so I feel as if the moon, like I said, it's all about phases and cycles. Um, seeing things as the moon gets bigger and more illuminated, you know, your path becomes a lot more clear. You see things a lot more clearly. It could even be the other way around. As the moon gets bigger, you get even more paranoid, even more like um, defensive or whatever the case is. I feel as if spirit is saying connect to the moon energies through rituals, through using the moon energy. Like every time the moon is in a different sign, it um, gives different energy. So research that, look into using, working with the moon energies. All right. I feel too like this is the new moon in Scorpio that we recently had. That's kind of kicked off a lot of what's happening here. Um, but when I see the Hierophant, as well, I feel like spirit is saying, find ways, like connect to rituals, connect to rituals, water, water, water. That's a message that was coming through a couple of readings back. Um, the moon that is Cancer, that's Pisces, that's Neptune is like, I feel like there is a connection here when it comes to working with water, water rituals, moon rituals. Um, connecting to your spirituality because the Hierophant is a very spiritual card. Um, things that are tried and true, whether for yourself or others, in order to get through this, to get through this chaos and conflict that you might be experiencing within your relationships. There's a gift in all of this. Always remember this. What's the final outcome when it comes to love? What's the final outcome for love, Scorpio? Wow, okay. So there's the Temperance card, Reverse, and the Two of Cups. My word, Scorpio. So, <clears throat> balance. Balance. There's things. And it's so interesting because this is the card. Temperance is the card of balance. You see the two cups, right? The angel here pouring water from two cups. And it flows up and down. Not just down, it flows up as well. And here's this Two of Cups. When I see this, it's almost like yin and yang. I feel like the message is, is that as much as, so this, this is a divine connection here with this two of cups energy. And we have to get comfortable with the fact that everything has its ups and downs. One minute things might seem perfect. Next minute it might seem disastrous. Chaos and conflict, right? And to flow with that and know There's nothing wrong with that, right? There's something that has to be balanced here though. I feel, and I feel like it has to do with patience because remember your cars are showing a real slowdown and then all of a sudden there's speed. Things speed up really fast, right? So don't try to control the process of all of this because at the end of the day, this is your final outcome, the two of cups. So for you singles, it's like you meeting somebody who you see eye to eye with, you all flow together. It's not just love, but it's like you can see y'all working together. 
building a home together, building a business together, joint finances. You know, it's, it's beyond just love. It's, it's a potential for legacy. It's a potential for something very um, committed, right? The temperance card reverse. This is Sagittarius energy. So it might be, um, I feel like that card is a sense of being impatient. Of finding a way to balance those two energies, working with spirit, seven of wands here. So there's a sense of a slight defense. Why is the temperance card here reversed, spirit guides? The sun reversed. So you have the moon card here and then the sun reversed. So I feel again, it's that sense of yin and yang. The star is here, right? But it's aligned. It's, it's here and it's right. It shows alignment. So I feel it's spirit saying to me is reiterating the fact that within love, there's so many cycles, phases. Um, and to allow that and to accept that it's just like life. It's just like it's just like nature. There's so many different cycles that we experience throughout, you know, the month, the day, the year, you know, and as above, so below. So allow it, uh, you know, um, it doesn't mean that there's something wrong. It means that it just is. I don't know. Is there even something as right or wrong? It just is. And to accept it for what it is. The nine of cups is here. So it's like wishes being fulfilled here. And judgment. Yep. So there's that rebirth, regeneration, resurrection, a reconciliation. It's a divine connection here. That's what I'm saying for y'all. Um, Spirit, guys, thank you for those messages. Can I have some love cards for Scorpio? Okay, can I have two more? Can I have two more? Ooh, okay. I'm not taking all of them. All right, so your first card. When it comes to matters of the heart, there is no right or wrong. Oh my God, Scorpio. Every choice you make expands your understanding of life and love. I know y'all won't believe me. I literally just said that. I'm trying to get it so y'all could see. Anyways, let's go on. You may not always understand why certain things happen. However, there is always a higher purpose to the events in your life. Through turmoil, a blessing will soon be revealed. Look at that beautiful card. And your final message. The past is now behind you. Release it and embrace new possibilities. A new path is now available to you. Follow it with faith. And here's another angel. All right, Scorpio, so those are your messages for love in the month of November. I hope that this has helped you. I hope it's, it's resonated in some way. And if it has, drop a thumbs up, drop a comment. Let me know what's happening. Let me know if this makes sense to you. Um, I will be doing some mid-month mid check-ins when it comes to love. We'll look at your energy and your partner's energy and we'll go from there, all right? So as always, um, thank you so much for watching my videos and supporting. Big love to you. And until next video, laters.